Hello everyone, Michael O'Brien here. Today we're gonna to talk about what do you do if you booked a gig and the person that hired you is trying to, at the last second, maybe change the time or they want you to stay later or some other crazy situation happens. Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Advice for Magicians where my goal is to help make you the best possible entertainer that you can be. Now in today's video, we're gonna do another kind of advice for professionals style video where I talk about the behind the scenes stuff, a lot of things that you will not find on any of these advice for magicians videos uh, where we're talking about the business end of stuff. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about something that I saw, um, someone posted something on one of the Facebook groups where they were asking this question like, hey, so I got booked by this, magi uh, by this client, excuse me, sorry, my brain's like a little too much eggnog. Um, <laughs> I got booked by a client to do one and a half hours of strolling magic. And that starts at like seven o'clock. Uh, but they have me ending at like 10 o'clock. They want me there for three hours. But it says very plainly when they booked me that I'm going to be doing, you know, 1.5 hours. So what's the deal? Turns out, the client understood the 1.5 hours as meaning I will be performing for one and a half hours, but there's also going to be a break in the middle. And so what they want is an hour of walk around magic, like an hour long to an hour and a half long lunch break in the middle where I can like join everyone and eat and whatever. And then another 30 minutes of walk around after all of that stuff. So I'm there for three hours, but I've only booked them for an hour and a half. So what do I do, right? So we're gonna talk about all of that stuff in this video right after these announcements. If you have not already done so, make sure to click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. That way you know every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to support the channel for just $1 a month, consider clicking the join button and becoming a member. Members will get access to a bunch of really cool stuff, including tutorials, early access to videos, emojis, badges, and even discounts at O'Brien Magic Shop. All that for just $1 a month. It's a great deal. I don't know why you guys haven't clicked the join button already, but it's because of you, it's because of all my subscribers and everyone else that I'm able to keep this channel going. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Let's go ahead and welcome some of our newest members. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, please say hello to Shin. Seg three zero 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 is that three hundred thousand? I don't know how many zeros that is. They all start to blend together after a moment. And Thomas Maloney, thank you guys so much for becoming members. Again, it's because of you that I'm able to keep this channel going. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. So let's talk about what to do in this situation. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. It all comes down to what are the details that you guys agreed on. If you left it vague and you said, yes, I'm gonna charge you for one and a half hours, 90 minutes of walk around magic, and that's gonna start at about seven o'clock or so. That's when we want you to start. If that's all that was in your contract, and then later on they say, okay, so we're gonna do an hour of walk around and then dinner is an hour and then another 30 minutes of walk around after that. I know you don't wanna hear this, but that's kind of gonna be on you if they decide that that's how they wanna do it. And the reason is, is because you weren't clear enough with them what you meant. So here is my solution for A, what to do. Let's just say we've already screwed up. So now what do we do to fix it, right? And then B, what can we do in the future to make sure that this doesn't happen again? So first thing you want to do is you want to talk to the client and you want to explain to them this is the situation, right? One and a half hours of my time is what you're paying for. Whether or not I'm, I'm walking around and doing magic or not, if you want me at your event from seven o'clock to 10 o'clock, you're paying me from seven o'clock to 10 o'clock, right? Now, if they fire back with, oh, well, we weren't clear on that. Sorry, let me go ahead and pop my button back in. I get a little excited and my whole shirt's gonna come off. There we go. If they fire back with, well, that wasn't made clear to us in the beginning, you're probably gonna have to eat that time unless you have another event that you have to get to right afterwards, you are probably gonna have to just say, you know what, I'll go ahead and do it. You guys are throwing me a free meal and it's my fault for not being specific enough, but this is what I meant when I booked you. But don't worry, it's totally fine, right? 
you probably will have to eat that time. If you don't eat that time, then the client's gonna be like, well, then I'm only gonna book you for the hour of strolling before dinner, then if you're not gonna stick around till after dinner, because we need you for another 30 minutes after dinner, right? You might have to just refund them that 30 minutes of their time, and then you might just have to do the hour, and then that's it, right? But all of this is going to lead to a dissatisfied customer. Now, I know in your head you're saying, yeah, but like this is bull, right? Like you're making me stick around for an extra hour or even longer, just sitting around, not doing anything, walking around the venue, maybe sitting down and yeah, they're gonna feed me, but like, is it really worth all that? My answer to you is this, it might not be worth it in the short term, cause that's an extra hour and a half of your time, but in the long run, it is going to mean a lot because you going above and beyond for your client, uh, showing them, yeah, you know what? Like that's totally my fault. Like I should have been more specific, but you know what? You guys are feeding me, that's totally fine, I'll stick around, right? Um, all that stuff is gonna go, it's gonna work in your favor in the long run. You're gonna get a great review out of it, they'll probably tip you uh, for understanding and sticking around. Uh, they're gonna talk to their family and friends anytime they're looking for a magician, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, I know this guy, he was great, he went above and beyond for me. Uh, you know, let me go ahead and give you his phone number, you should give him a call. Um, What's gonna happen if you say, you know what, no, like I'm not budging, like you're gonna pay me for an hour and a half of my time and then I'm piecing out of there. I'm not sticking around until 10 o'clock. They're gonna either be like, okay, well, we want a refund or they're gonna say, okay, well, then we only want you to walk around for an hour before dinner. There's no point to having you come for another 30 minutes after dinner and pay you double just to do that. Um, in which case you're gonna lose money or worst case scenario, they're gonna say, you know what, fine, whatever, do the gig, but like, you know, we're not happy about you. <laughs> like at this point, hiring you was a mistake and now you're not gonna get a good review. They're not gonna talk highly of you to their friends or coworkers or colleagues or anyone else. So now you've lost all of those marketing opportunities. And number three, you can kiss any tip that you were hoping on goodbye. Um, and honestly, if I was a client, I probably wouldn't book you, right? And repeat bookings. That's another thing that I didn't even mention. Uh, I just got booked not too long ago to do a company holiday party. This is the third year in a row that they've hired me and they are a high ticket gig. They they are not like a show up for 30 minutes and do like $500 of magic and peace out. They're a high ticket gig. Like I did a 90 minute show for these people and charged a pretty penny for it. Uh, and they do this every year, <laughs> right? So um, you're gonna kiss that potential goodbye too. Now, if it's a wedding, uh, you know, obviously they're not going to hire you for another wedding again, but you know, they might be like, yeah, you're getting married. Like I had a magician at my wedding and he was great. So you're kissing all of those things goodbye, right? So the moral of the story is, is go above and beyond for your client. Unless you have an obligation afterwards and you just cannot stay, you're probably going to have to just eat that time and you're just going to have to deal with it. And I know you don't want to hear that, but at the end of the day, going above and beyond for your client is something that we as entertainers need to do uh, because it's just the right thing to do. Now, what can you do to prevent this in the future? Uh, you are going to explain to the client that they are paying you for your time, not for the services in between. The services in between can fluctuate, they can change. Maybe you're doing walk around for, from this time to this time. Then there's a little 30 minute break and then you're gonna do a 30 minute stage show for everybody from this time to this time, etc. right? But you're making it clear, this is what I'm charging you and my rate is from this time to this time. You have me from seven o'clock to nine o'clock, right? So there's a start time and an end time in there. Um, what that's gonna do is it's also gonna prevent them from being like, hey, uh, people are showing up late. I know I asked you to start at seven, but can you start at 7.30 instead? So if you booked them for a 30 minute show and they have you from seven to 7.30 and they want you to start at 7.30, you're gonna have to explain to them, look, I have another event afterwards. Your time slot is seven to 7.30. I cannot stay any later than 7.30. If you are able to, you can say, oh, I could start maybe 10 or 15 minutes late and go to 7.45 instead of 7.30, but that's the best I can do. Again, I have another event booked after you and I can't be late to that. And you can just explain to them, you know, if I'm late to that, that's not gonna be cool. So like, I have to stick to what we agreed on. But if you just say seven o'clock start time, 30 minute show, yeah, like you're saying, I'm gonna start at seven, but if they then say, hey, people are showing up late, you know, can we start later? 
you know, it just leaves it open. They're like, well, you're still doing the 30 minute show. We're still paying you to do the 30 minute show or whatever, you know? So having that start and end time is really going to help you out. Uh, and also nailing down the specific details. So it's best to discuss these things with the client. So for example, not too long ago, I did a wedding and it was a very similar situation. Um, they booked me for one hour of walk around during cocktail hour, which is like everyone's mingling and coming in and grabbing drinks and finger foods. And you have the people walking around with the trays. Would you like to try a sandwich? And it's like a little sandwich on the thing, all that stuff. So I walked around there and then dinner time happened. They did not want me doing any magic during dinner time. Then it was time for like the toast and all of this stuff. And the best man stands up and does his thing and all that. And right before that, they wanted a 15 minute long thing where I just did a quick thing at the head table at, at the top that everyone can see. I did the magic for the uh, bride and groom and everyone else in the room was able to watch. And then ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me. Now I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to, you know, the best man or whatever. And then the best man stands up and does his piece. And then the maid of honor does her piece. And then, you know, people do their toasts and all this stuff. And then like the, the party starts and the dancing and celebrating and the DJ comes on and, and, and does this thing and all that stuff. So I essentially was there for about an hour just doing nothing, just eating. Right. But the client was made aware that from this time to this time was cocktail hour from this time to this time was break, and from this time to this time was the show. Now, let's just say stuff kept getting pushed back throughout the night. I told them, I'm like, the latest the show can start is this time to this time, okay? Because that's the time that you guys booked me for. If you want me to start later than that, I'm gonna have to charge you more for that, right? And, and that's all made clear at the beginning. Not the day of, this is all made clear when they booked me, that they knew that my time was what they were paying for. So they're getting from seven o'clock to eight o'clock cocktail hour from eight o'clock to nine o'clock was dinner where i'm not doing anything and they understood that they're still paying me to be there um they're they're paying for what i call break time um so they're not paying me my full rate necessarily for that um it's like an add-on charge that i add to that to it to say that like i'm staying but like you're paying for that time for me to be there if that makes any sense uh, and then the 15 minute show from let's say uh, nine o'clock to 9.15 or 9.15 to 9.30 or whatever, right? Uh, usually I'll leave like a 30 minute like little grace period in there. So like I already know I'm gonna anticipate things are gonna get pushed back. So I'll say, look, I'll, I'll give you this grace period. So 10 o'clock is the absolute latest that I can be there. If it gets pushed back a little bit, that's totally fine. You're paying for me to be there for this whole thing, right? That way it's not like 9.30, 9.45 and they're like, hey, can you start at like 10, 10.30 instead? I'll be like, no, 10, 10 o'clock is the latest I can be here. If you want me to do the, the thing, like I have to do it like in the next 10 minutes. I can't stay later, you know, like I have to do it now. And if they want to argue about that, now it's like, look, we agreed to this beforehand. You paid me for this time to this time. And I told you that it can't go any later. I have another gig after you. I'm doing an, I'm doing a, I don't know, a frat party at midnight in Los Angeles. Like I got to be in LA by like 1130. Like I can't, I can't stick around. So, you know, as long as you're telling them start time and end time, and you're clear on all of the stuff that's happening in the middle at the beginning, when you're booking them before they've sent you any money, you should be totally fine and this shouldn't be a problem. Are you still gonna get people that are gonna try to push the envelope a little bit? Yes, you are. Are you still gonna get people that are gonna be a little upset at you for not like, oh, this is ridiculous, you can't just start. Like you're gonna get Karens, like that's gonna happen, right? But at the end of the day, if they're not holding up their end of the bargain, that's on them, right? There's nothing that you have to worry about. But going all the way back to the beginning now, if they booked you for an hour and a half and you just say, okay, yeah, I'll show up at like seven o'clock and I'll start doing magic. You left it open now for them to be like, yeah, but it's from seven to eight and then dinner. And then from nine to nine 30, you know, is, is the, the, the other part, the, the restaurant table hopping part of it. And now you're going to be like, we didn't agree to any of that. And they're going to be like, you agreed to 90 minutes of magic and I'm getting my 90 minutes of magic. And now it's like, now it's a little mushy, right? The details are, it could be either person, you know, who are you going to agree with the magician or the client? Um, so 
Moral of this whole thing is, I know I ranted about it for a while, right? Moral of this whole thing is make sure that you're very clear in the booking process of what they want and what services you're gonna provide and what they are paying for. This is all very important to clear up all these details at the get because if you don't, later on, after the money's been exchanged, if they try to change things and you don't have any of this in writing, or if you haven't really agreed to anything at the beginning, now it's kind of whatever they want to change. You kind of have to either go along with or give them a refund and say, sorry, I can't do that, right? So it's very important to lock down these details at the beginning, especially during the holiday season. I book two or three shows a day sometimes, so I can't stay that extra 15 minutes because I factor, factored in my mind, tear down time, drive time, and set up time for the other event. I know that I have to be in LA at 11.30 and I know there's probably gonna be traffic, right? So I can't stick around. I gotta be in LA at 11.30. I gotta leave right at the time that I told you that I was gonna leave. So as long as the client knows all this stuff in the beginning, you should be totally fine. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure to click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. That way you'll know every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to check out some more magic, visit us at obrianmagic.com and be sure to check out our online magic shop where you will find the latest and greatest magic books, downloads, and accessories.